Hello, my name is Captain Joe Fulton. Today I'm going to be guiding you through a preview to the Glad Hill test. 20 meter shuttle run. The objective is to follow the progressively faster pacing over a 20 meter course, led by the sound of the beep. The candidate will run back and forth over a 20 meter course at a progressively faster speed until they, one, stop themselves, two, are stopped by a proctor due to receiving two warnings in a row, or B, receiving three cautions at any time during the test. During the test, candidates will be identified by their assigned lane number. At every signal, they must reach the next 20 meter line, marked by the pylons at each end. One foot must be on or over the end line. Then, once the beep sounds, they reverse their direction and arrive at the other end line in time for the next beep. At the start, when the pace is slower, candidates may reach the end line with time to spare. Candidates must wait for the beep prior to leaving the end line. Warning, leaving early. Candidates that leave the end line before the beep two times in a row will be terminated. If a candidate does not reach the end line in time for the beep, they will receive a caution. Proctors will call out loudly, caution, lane. If after two end line cautions at any time during the test, the candidate receives a third caution, their test will be terminated. Proctors will call out loudly, lane. That is your third caution, you're out. Ahead of the end line is a warning line. At every signal, the candidate must have reached the warning line. If a candidate does not reach the warning line by the beep, proctors will call out warning lane. They must still reach the end line, pivot, and reach the warning line at the end by the next beep to clear their warning. If twice in a row the candidate does not cross the warning line by the beep, their test will be terminated. The two warnings must be consecutive. Proctors will call out warning lane. That is your second, you're out. The test is stopped after stage 10. Claustrophobia test. Wearing a blacked out face piece, you'll be guided into a confined area for a time to be determined by the tester. While you are confined, you'll be instructed by the tester to reach up to the top of the space, find and count the number of washers on a bolt sticking out of the wall. You must then call out the correct number to the tester. This test detects fear of confined areas. It is scored on a pass, fail basis, and is not timed. Test two, ladder climb. You will climb a 40 foot extension ladder, uncouple and recouple a carabiner assembly on top of the rung of the ladder. You will then climb back down the ladder. You will wear a belt to which a safety harness is attached and the 20 pound backpack cylinder from a self-contained breathing apparatus. This task is marked on a pass fail basis. It is not timed. This test evaluates fear of heights, not the ladder climbing ability. The completion times for the remaining tasks are based on firefighters performing the tasks at a safe and effective pace no running is allowed. Performance times faster than a purposeful walk pace do not receive higher scores. However, slow performance times receive reduced scores. If your time to complete any task is very slow, you'll be given one retest opportunity. Event three, hose carry climb. You'll lift and carry over the shoulder a bundle of tied hose up and back down seven times for a total height of 100 feet ending at the start position. Lift the bundle to the upright position by bending your legs, not your back. You are permitted to hold onto the railings if you wish and you may change the carrying shoulder either while moving or by stopping but the time continues. The hose cannot be carried around the neck. When fighting fires, the SCBA would not permit this. Please walk quickly. It is not necessary to run. There is no penalty for placing the hose down and picking it up but the time continues. During this task, you'll be wearing a 32 pound vest and eight pound ankle weights. The time begins when you bend to pick up the hose and ends when you reach the bottom of the landing for the seventh time. This is also the weight of a small victim who would be carried from a fire. Handle the bundle though it was a victim and place it down carefully. If you slam the victim on the floor, you have to repeat the task at the end of the testing. Event four, rope pull. Using a rope four times, you'll hoist and lower a weight of a 50 foot section of hose plus nozzle, which together weighs 50 pounds. For this event, we'll be using a 50 pound kettlebell. This is to be done in hand over hand control motion, both up and down. Place your feet one in front of the other, approximately two feet apart. You are not permitted to rest your arms on the railing at any time. During this task, you'll be wearing a 32 pound vest and eight pound ankle weights. The task is timed. Raise and lower the weight in a controlled manner. The weight you are raising and lowering represents expensive equipment that is required for fighting fires. Dropping the weight carelessly result in a 15 second time penalty. Event five, hose advance drag. Via strap held over the shoulder, you'll pull a weighted sled a distance of 50 feet. Look straight ahead at all times, do not touch the walls. Pulling the sled necessitates the same force required to advance two sections of charged hose. You will be wearing a 32 pound vest and eight pound ankle weights. The task is timed and the timing starts when the front of the sled crosses the start line and is complete when the rear of the sled crosses the finish line. Event six, ladder lift. You'll remove the ladder from the brackets, grasping it anywhere on two rungs that are taped. 
This test evaluates your ability to perform several firefighting tasks which require similar force application at or above shoulder height. Therefore, this task cannot be performed by lifting one end of the ladder at a time while the other remains on the ground. Lower the ladder to the floor, then return it to the brackets. When the ladder is being held at bracket height, one end at a time can be placed on the bracket. Also, when one end of the ladder is on the bracket, you may release one hand and assist the other hand by pushing from under the ladder. You'll be wearing a third two pound vest and eight pound ankle weights during the task. The wearing of platform shoes is not permitted. This test is marked on a pass fail basis. It is not timed. Event seven, victim drag. You will drag a 200 pound dummy by the handle behind the neck only. A distance of 50 feet, weaving in and out of the traffic cones placed every eight feet. During this task, you'll be wearing a 32 pound vest and eight pound ankle weights. This is a timed task and the time will start when you bend to lift the dummy and end when you recross the start line, turn the dummy around so he's ready for the next person. This task simulates dragging an unconscious firefighter from a fire. Handle the victim, although it was a human victim, mistreating the dummy will result in a 10 second time penalty. Event 8, Force Entry. In this test, you are required to move a heavily weighted tire a distance of 12 inches until the tire contacts the marker. By hitting the tire repeatedly with a 10 pound sledgehammer, this task simulates force entry through a door or wall, requires upper body strength, upper body endurance, and motor ability. The height of the table is the height of a door handle and also the height at which a sledgehammer or axe is normally swung during forced entry. Moving a tire of this weight a distance of 12 inches has been documented to require the same amount of sledgehammer work as breaking through a door or wall. You will be wearing a 32 pound vest and 8 pound ankle weights during the task. You must complete the task within the maximum time. Aim is important. You must hit the tire directly. Each time you hit the table before hitting the tire, you receive an additional 5 second penalty. That is the conclusion of the Gled Hill testing. Train hard, be prepared, and good luck throughout the process.